Hey guys, welcome back to another video and in today's episode we're going to take a look at the body and figure out a way to temporarily attach it to the base portion of the frame assembly that I started to put together in a previous episode. I need to do this before going any further in the chassis development and uh, you know assembly of all the tube work for the roll cage uh, and all those things so that I could see the actual space that I have to work with and I brought the engine and the transmission in along with independent rear suspension uh, as well as the body so that I could kind of put everything within uh, its location and verify that against CAD to make sure that all of the dimensions that I have uh, are close or pretty correct and that there are no crazy surprises uh, through this process because once we start adding the roll cage in and all of the tube work then it's pretty much going to lock the body into the vehicle <laughs> at that point and it will not be very easy to to remove and i just want to make sure that before that happens i can double verify the seating area and all of the locations for everything and i need to first mount the body and start kind of raising things up a little bit to also go for the actual ride height of the vehicle and, and kind of verify where everything sits within that space as well. So yeah, so let's just get started and jump into it. All right guys, so here we are with the body and engine and transmission setup as well as the rear, uh, independent rear uh, assembly as, you know, in the front. And I know it's in the front at the moment, but I had to move it out of the way so I could bring the, the body in. And I posted this on Instagram, just kind of asking the question about having an all-wheel drive version of the blade. And man, that kind of almost went viral, it was crazy. So everybody <laughs> really likes that idea. Uh, just need somebody to pay for that because that's, uh, that's an expensive uh, endeavor to take on and I have no idea how to do that. But at some point in the future, I'd really like to, to do an all-wheel drive version, maybe a hybrid, you know, where it's an electric front-wheel drive assisted setup and, and you know, all motor and engine for the rear or maybe just an all-electric. I don't know. That's where the future's going, it seems. So, uh, I don't know, but that's a different day, different car, <laughs> uh, and a lot of money. So, I don't know if I'll get there or not, but, you know, it's interesting that so many people are on board with that. Uh, yeah, so here I have the seats in place just so that I can see, you know, how the arrangement goes and how the fitment is between uh, how the new chassis is going to lay out in, in the kind of the cockpit area of the car. Uh, I have the transmission here, which is, this is a uh, six-speed um, Tremec Magnum T56, and it actually has three different mounting locations for the shifter, so you can move it around and, and really position it where you need it uh, for the driver. It's, it, right now it's in the right location, so no big deal. Um, the, uh, the overall dimensions or, or uh, location of everything right now is pretty much going to stay the same you know as it was with the original blade setup so I haven't really changed too much as far as the the engine placement and drivetrain in relation to the main section of the body so I know you know pretty much everything's going to fit within uh, the space that I have however there are a lot of different things with the actual chassis itself uh, and the roll cage um, that I didn't have. So the, the roll cage is going to be uh, more advanced or just more to it than the original setup. And it's going to be lighter and just laid out differently. So the spacing requirements are going to change uh, as far as that goes. So also the body is a lot wider than the previous version and that's changed a little bit. The track width has definitely changed. The wheelbase uh, is only changing by uh, not even a whole inch, so it's getting lengthened just a little bit, uh, but not very much. Um, yeah, so this is basically what I'm having to work with. This is kind of everything stripped out from the previous car and kind of hacked up. <laughs> uh, so I had to cut a lot of things off and do a lot of, uh, I don't know, just deconstruction of everything because I'm going to have to rebuild a lot of stuff and and that's going to be, uh, you know, fun later down the road. 
But essentially, I'm going to have to build some brackets right now to attach it to this lower portion of the base portion of the chassis to the body so that I can take the body on and off and place it within the same space every time so that when I come in and start mocking up all the pieces for the, uh, the cage support, so like the footwell and the front um, cage section and then the rear uh, main bar that goes over the, the top of the car or over the uh, top of the seats and kind of the, the main you know, support bar, I need to make sure I can lock the body into its position every time and then also be able to remove it so that I can do uh, some of the other additional work to it. So I got to still build out the front section of the chassis and then the rear section as well. So I know it doesn't look like too much right now because I'm using just this two by two uh, steel and there's going to be a lot more uh, uh, CAD work and chassis work and all that stuff that will uh, come off of this and you'll see as it, as it goes along uh, that it's going to be uh, super triangulated and strong and you know built kind of like a race car. So that's the uh, that's the overall goal for that. So one other thing that I want to address with the uh, is with the body is you know what donor car did I use for this? And there's really not a donor car here, um, but there are parts of one. So what I started with was a old 90s style uh, Miata or MX-5, whatever you want to call it. And I did that for a few different reasons. Uh, one was so that I could use the glass. The front glass was really the main uh, important part. And then also the side glass and just the fitment between the two together. So when you're trying to build a vehicle like this, that's usually like a big hang up for a lot of people. They'll go and design a vehicle and uh, put a ton of work into it. And then they'll come up to the glass and you're like, okay, where do I get my glass? And I'll just have it made or whatever. And that's not how that usually works because it's like 25 to $40,000 to have a mold made for a windshield. And then you have to commit to several hundred order of that same glass. So if you're just doing a one-off, it makes no sense. So you really have to find uh, the right car that has a similar glass to your design. And the Miata was something that I kind of started with that uh, to simplify the, the build process and to uh, cut down on the cost because if the windshield breaks, it's real easy to get that glass because the Miata is like the uh, foreign version of a Mustang and it's very easy to uh, get parts for it. So I retained all the inner door parts and this just the surrounding section of the front windshield. Uh, the side of the doors are uh, custom and the roof of course is custom because all Miatas are, are convertibles and this is a hardtop. So uh, all of that is you know, designed by me and it's, a little, it's different from the Miata and I gave it a lot more headroom as well on the top by kind of making the top a little bit more bubbly but in a, in a way it actually I think looks much better than uh, the roof on a, or the hard, hard top on a Miata if you get one. So they do make those aftermarket. Uh, anyway, so just wanted to uh, cover that real quick. So now I'm gonna dive in and start uh, cutting some metal and things for the uh, support pieces and get that started. Okay, so I'm sitting in the, uh, the car, <laughs> uh, so to speak, and you can kind of see how much leg room I have. I'm 6'4", got pretty long legs and I'm not all the way to the main uh, two by two support bar. And this will be where the pedal is, be kind of like right here, pretty much underneath where the uh, header tube is. And so all of this uh, footwell area will kind of be sculpted around the exhaust since it's pointing forward anyway. And then there'll be a booster, a brake booster cylinder in this area. Uh, and then we'll have the clutch and everything else. So my legs are fairly straight. Um, I can uh, probably scoot the seat over a little bit more. But mainly I'm here to address the support bracket. So I'm going to put the support bracket here and I have a tape measure. So I've got about eight inches or so uh, to build a brace. And I'm going to attach it to this portion of the body. And this is a pretty strong uh, section of the body and the body's super lightweight like I can lift it up with two fingers and one hand so <laughs> uh, uh, it's very light. Uh, this is the transmission and this is the same transmission that's in the uh, the Dodge Viper uh, so they have it's the same kind of setup so the 
uh, transmission tunnel is going to be pretty high. And then obviously this is the gear shift. And when I say this is a very mechanical transmission, you can kind of hear it. It's it's very you know positive when you shift, and that's why people like these type of transmissions, and they're so good to race because when you're when you're in gear, you're in gear. Um, so anyway, so that, and then if I can turn this around, <clears throat> uh, yeah. All right, so you can kind of see me, and I don't know if you can see my hand there, but you can kind of see the relationship to my hand and my head, and I don't know how much that is, but that's a lot of inches, maybe six inches or so. So I have plenty of room for a helmet and anything else that uh, I need to account for, plus the seat can actually uh, go down lower, and it's, it's a fairly thick seat, so I can make it uh, thinner. And then the main uh, roll bar hoop will be behind my head back here. And it's gonna go this way and then follow the contour of the body. Uh, and then also have like a crisscross type uh, bar structure behind it. And then a seat belt mounts as well. Uh, then there'll be more bars going to the back that attach to the rear suspension uh, area. So anyway, just want to give you a kind of an inside look at <laughs> the space and how much leg room, because I think this is probably the most exciting part for me is being in a small car uh, that's super powerful and having all the leg room. So my legs will obviously be bent and so I'll have the ability to move the seat up even more or adjust the pedals either way. So, all right, so now I'm gonna go make these brackets and get back to that. All right, guys, so I've built the little standoffs for the body and have them in place down here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's one and then that's the other one. Um, and I have two more over here. So, oops. So basically, I now have to align the body uh, onto this lower portion of the chassis down here and make sure it's uh, directly in the middle. And then next, I'm going to build uh, some little four inch standoffs that support the whole chassis and body off the ground uh, and get it close to the uh, natural ride height of the vehicle. So I'll uh, do that next. All right, guys. So uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but I lost some video footage. So you guys are going to miss out on <laughs> some of the high speed stuff. Uh, maybe that's a good thing. But uh, my camera kind of freaked out. I, I don't know what happened, but it, it, uh, it turned my video files into like a database format. Um, I'm not really sure what that means, but anyway, it, it caused me to lose a lot of uh, video that I'd done uh, for all of the welding and, and assembly and uh, raising and lifting and, <laughs> uh, and everything. So that stuff's gone, but I uh, made a lot of progress on the, uh, the body. And as I showed in a previous video, I made these you know, mounts for the body and I now have bolted the body down onto uh, the mounts and positioned the body to be dead center into this uh, lower chassis support and even moved the uh, rear suspension to the back uh, and placed it you know, kind of roughly where it needs to be at the moment. And it needs to drop down about two inches, uh, same with the engine and the transmission. So those need to uh, drop down uh, quite a bit. And I'll do that later. Just right now I had to uh, kind of put everything up high, mainly because I'm using jack stands over here and uh, that's the lowest setting on it. So uh, that will drop down uh, later and I'll make a custom thing or whatever. So there's still a lot to do with making the chassis mount. So I'll probably leave it like that until I get the main mounts for the rear section. And same for the front, you know, uh, I still have to build the front section off to hold the motor mounts and the rest of the transmission mount and all that stuff. And so for it sitting up high right now, it just gives me a little bit of room uh, to work with everything. Um, yeah, and I even raised the chassis up four inches. So that's pretty close to uh, the default ride height. It, it may be a little lower in the front, around three in the front to four in the back or four in the front to uh, about four and a half in the back. So I have a little bit of rake to it to help with some of the aerodynamic flow underneath the car. 
and stuff like that. So, but right now I just, I just need everything up off the ground at a, a certain point. And this is really the uh, kind of critical, crucial part of uh, building this chassis because I need this body to not move and I need it to be exactly in dead center of the vehicle so that I can use it as a guide to align everything else with and make sure that all of my CAD uh, you know, dimensions and all that are correct and then I'll come in and start laying in the cage work and all that stuff. So that's going to be coming up next uh, in the next video where we start building out the, the foot box and the uh, main support structure for the steering column and all of that. And then also uh, build the uh, main uh, roll bar hoop in the back so that we can start working off you know, from, from that bar uh, for our sidebars, which I'm thinking about making the sidebars actually dig into the door panels. There's actually a lot of space into the doors. So that whole lower section of the door, I may actually get rid of so that I can have a, a support brace go through and kind of be inset into the door uh, for a real clean look. And that way it's not taking up any uh, additional interior space. And it will just, I think it'll be a cool feature uh, and just, you know, make the door a little lighter. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So I'm just kind of playing around with that idea. And uh, yeah, so I guess with that, um, you know, you guys uh, let me know what, what you think in the comments and, and uh, give me some feedback. Uh, uh, make sure you like and subscribe and all that goodness um, for good old YouTube to actually find us. <laughs> and um, I want to keep working on this. And like I said, next video, we have a lot more actual tube structure work coming. And I know this part wasn't super exciting, but it just had to be done. And it was actually a lot of work uh, to get this uh, centered, centered and, and aligned and mounted uh, so that nothing shifted while we build all the rest of the chassis. Uh, yeah, so I guess with that, I'll see you guys um, next week in the next video. And I'll see you guys later. Thank you.